Here we are. We're with the main, main man right now. You can't get that smile off his face. <laughs> Who are you, part two, three, four, and five, I think, because I think after this one, I don't think we'll have him on until 2025. <laughs> Red Nose John, how are you, buddy? I'm feeling champion. I bet you are. I bet you are. Hey, listen, I've got to say, and I've, I've done it on Twitter, and I've got to say to you, congratulations. Absolutely unbelievable um, season by, by your Red Men. Um, and won it in style, like you used to. And don't want to give the ages away, John, but I remember and you remember when your club used to win it regularly in style, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, look, let's just get straight into it, John, because I don't want to put myself through the pain, any more pain. <laughs> I'm going dancing around the tulips, right? So, John, how does it finally feel getting your Premier League title in your hands? How does it finally feel, John? Unbelievable. And I'll let you know even more, but at the end of the day, I'm up sobered up a bit by then. Yeah, so, I'm, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> it's only been three or four days, so uh, I need to get some kip. <laughs> Look, uh, listen, I know minimal kip and plenty of drink. That's what I know you're really good at. You're good at that. You're good at that. Yeah, exactly. You know me. I can, I can, I've, got, I've got the stamina. For a You've got the good constitution of that as well, mate. Definitely. That's right. So it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a pretty celebratory sort of last few days. Um, but but it's actually, it's a strange one, Kev, because I was thinking about that. How does it feel? I mean, it's clearly unbelievable, you know, for, 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 for us. And as you said, I was there um, all the way through the, 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 the glory days of the late 70s, early 80s, and uh, through to the, all the way through the 80s to 90. And when we won the last one in 90, and it's been said by everyone who's been involved in Liverpool, no one would have believed that that was the last uh, title that we, were, we, we would win for 30 years. Just no one would believe it at all. John, John, um, can, I, can, I, can I add to that? Yeah. I, you talk about people around Liverpool, I don't think any fan in general would have no. actually thought, if they'd have said to a fan in 1990, 1991, that Liverpool won't win a title for 20, 30, 29 years, that looked at you like you got three heads, mate. Absolutely. And, I, and I, it's funny, actually, there's a guy in the Liverpool Echo, I think it was, I was reading the other day, and the start of his article was um, celebration time for Liverpool, uh, no reason why we won't be back here doing exactly the same thing next year. And then afterwards he put, that wasn't my byline yesterday, that was my byline after I won the title in 1990. Well, a year ago. Yeah. Back next year. And in fact, you know, when Kenny left the following season, Forget we were top of the league. We were we yeah. like to, you know, normal service was uh, was being resumed, you know, and we were going to get on with it. So yeah, I mean, so for that and to wait that long, I think obviously makes it sweeter. And I think I've spoken to a number of people who, who were about when I was about watching the wins. And I think if we could have gone back, and I think Steve McMahon said it, if we could go back to them, we'd have probably savoured the last few even more because you do get to a point where you're winning it that much. I think we won it six times in seven years or something. When you go back and you're winning it that often, you know. You, it does become a little bit blasé that you think, you know, that's another one, put it on the shelf, and then we, there we go. And if you knew you weren't going to be, you know, if, you, if a thirsty man knew he wasn't going to be sipping any water for another 30 years, he'd enjoy that last second. Oh, I'll tell you, big time. No, big time. Uh, John, John, I, I really get it, obviously, because the Arsenal side I was in obviously took the title in 91. Exactly. And obviously things changed a couple of years later because it was went from the Football League to the Premier League. Yeah, and then obviously it's 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 as though the old league never existed. Well, which is sad. Yeah, exactly. That it is. That's right. Yeah, it is like it is like that. In fact, I got one the other day, which one did you see, which made me laugh. Actually, I had a um, Man United fan saying you've only won, you're the same as Leicester and Blackburn because you've only won one, one Premier League title. But actually, the names changed so many times. Apparently, they've never won it. <laughs> if you're going to go back to just name changes, it changed in 2016. They've never won it. They've never been in the title race. <laughs> but, but listen, um, I think it was interesting. Go back to your point about how do I feel. I've got to be really honest with you. Klopp said something. Um, he said that when the final whistle went, City-Chelsea game, he said he felt very empty and he felt very flat. And he said, I wonder if that's because the emotion was so big. And I absolutely got that. On Thursday night, yeah. I actually felt a bit flat. And I think it's a combination of things. 
I think one we kind of, yeah, although we've not allowed ourselves to say it out loud, we've known it's been coming since possibly January, February. Yeah. It looked almost impossible that it wouldn't happen. Um, so we've known it's coming. But I think it was almost so big, it's difficult to take. You know, sometimes at that big moment, there's a feeling of emptiness, flatness, because it's almost, you, you can't really. You can't fathom it, can you? You oh, can't fathom. It. Yeah, no. yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it... out Thursday, sitting in a quiet moment, having a drink before the craziness started, just really thinking back over over the years and, you know, how long it had been, and feeling a bit like, well, that's it then, is it? Sort of thing, you know, what, what, what comes now? I've got to say... You made up for it, I bet. A bit over the weekend. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you're making up for it. <laughs> but there was a lull before the storm. There was a real lull. And, uh, you know, there's a... You know, I speak to you a lot about my, my dad was uh, around when... Uh, yeah, you wish, I'm you sure you wish he was here for this, definitely. Yeah, that was one of my first thoughts when we won it. You know, he was with me. We were celebrated together in 90. I'd have been early 20s. He, you know, he'd have been probably my age now. And um, he was there. And, 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 I, and, I, and I thought that back. And there's a video actually going around amongst Liverpool at the moment where showing the generations of, you know, the dad walking with his little boy in 30 years ago and now that little boy is the dad walking with walking with his son and that brought it back to you know you, you think of people like that you think if he'd been here he'd have absolutely loved to see it but god he wouldn't have believed it. you know he died 10 years after we won it in 2000 yeah. 2001 so he wouldn't have believed it so there's a lot of emotion wrapped up in it a lot of the the background the past you know um but really just joy so John, no, I've caught. Listen, listen, yeah, and and I'm, hey, I know you can milk it. You, you can okay. milk it. So, <laughs> so, but John, what would you say to any young Liverpool fan right now, experience a title win for the first time? Because obviously you've 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 been for you've lived it kind of thing. Yeah. But for their their first time. Well, on the message for the back of what's happened, what happened to me, and what happened to plenty of people my age, milk it. As I, and I don't mean that in a because I mean, enjoy it, drink yeah. It in, drink it in and, and, and enjoy it. Because, you know, I think those periods of dominance that used to go on in the past are less likely to happen now anyway. You know, we may not win it again, but, you know, I, we could maybe come on to that because I think we will, but we may not. Yeah. There's no guarantees yeah. in, in life at all. So just enjoy it and enjoy it with the people that you want to enjoy it with, you know, because those people may not be around either. So True. just know those. So I think my lesson will be now. Any of these things we win, you know, the Champions League last year, the, the Premier League this year. If we won, you know, is that tin pot trophy still going on the FA Cup? Isn't it? I believe. Oi, so oi, oi! That. You behave yourself. <laughs> That's pulled you out. That pulled you out of fire a few times. That cup. Don't worry yeah, about yeah, that. <laughs> so if that was, so if that um, so if we win that. I think you've got to savor them like they're last. Don't take them for granted. They just, yeah. they may be the last time you do it. And if they're not, brilliant. You know, that, that's brilliant. But they might be. So I say to any kid or anyone young who's, who's watching it, just really remember this and savour it and make the most of it. And um, what about, hey, John, what would you say to the boys who waited 30 years like yourself? Go mad. Party. <laughs> Party like it's 1990. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, and, you know, you feel a bit of a kinship with them because I know a few. Of that age, you know, in connection with a few on Twitter. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, lads around you where you sit, aren't there? there are. yeah, you've you've got are. kind of good camaraderie at the, at the club. And yeah, there's one guy there who's um, who, who sits in front of me in, at Anfield, and he's he's in his seventies. Uh, lovely, lovely guy, and his whole family are there. And I'm quite friendly with his son. Met, went over, we met him in uh, in Madrid. But he said to me, you know, you start to think you'll never see that again in his seventies. So, you know. For even people older than me, yeah. you know, to see it again at least once is great. You know, the circle's complete. They've seen yeah. it 30 years ago. They see it again. And I think, you know, for all of us, my age group and above, uh, I just think it's extra special because it's almost like a return to what used to be normal. It's yeah. funny, really, in a time in the world where normal's changed, for Liverpool fans, it's gone back to a normal of, of 30 years ago to an extent where you're winning it. But it's just a crazy feeling. Yeah, I'm, listen, John. Listen, I, I, I can honestly say, thirty years—that's far too long for that football club. And look, yeah, and I, I know my ties. I'm an Arsenal fan, but I played across the way at, at, at Everton. But you know, Liverpool used to dominate so much. Um, it's been really weird, Kevin, as well, because you, you people say thirty years, and I've got to be honest with you, it is such a long time. But we've had so many—not well, so many, but we've had enough near misses. 
throughout the period. To keep it's you been, going. To yeah, keep you going. It's almost not seen quite as long because you've always been, always been five years from the last near miss. And then you've had a couple of years, you think, we're going to do it now. And then it falls away again. So it's been a weird journey, really. If we'd just sunk, maybe done like a Leeds and, and drawn down the league and, you know, and you just weren't in the game anymore, it would have probably seen longer. But we've kind of been in the fight for, for, for quite a few times. You know, there was a time where us, Arsenal and United were the, the big three, really. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, we had the Rafa miss, we had the Brendan miss. Um, and before that, Julio coming second, and then we thought it was a well. He then went out and bought. Uh, hey, yeah. hey, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget Roy. And Roy, yeah, I mean, which was possibly talent-wise one of the best Liverpool teams that, that we've had. They just didn't have the application because that's the thing about this lot. It's not just talent. This lot are just monsters, they're absolute monsters. Of you know, make, Klopp calls them the mentality monsters, and I think that's what they are. Because yeah. to win matches is one thing. To draw them another, but to go at that level for not this just this season, but to get 97 points last season, come back and say, right, we're going to do it again and better. And actually, the end of the year before was pretty much that level. To keep at that level, I think is just that's the biggest. Yeah, thing. John, I think there's a. I think you've got a lot of players playing in their prime. Yeah. At the top of their game, and they've all come together because it's. I, I've found it's timing. You know, I remember the old Liverpool teams of, of they used to sign somebody from a, a small club, build them up in the reserves, and then when they got into the first team, you'd think, Well, who's that? Where's he been? But they, they always made sure that the timing was right. And that's what they've got to keep doing going forward, Kevin. I think you don't know. Right. In fact, Graham Sinestra was interviewed the other day and he made a very good point. He said that when Liverpool were in their pomp in those that 20 years or whatever when they were in best, he said they had the luxury of never signing players under pressure. You know, like a little bit with Arsenal, I think, at the moment. Yeah. They're looking for the magic, the re magic recipe. United have been through it as well. And we, we did it for years. Um, Liverpool in the old days used to, you say, bring a player in, but there was no pressure on that player to go straight in the first team and be a superstar. Yeah. They were put in the greenhouse, they were nurtured, they were got into the Liverpool way and plopped in. So Liverpool were in control. And we did it, yeah, I think, like a couple of years ago with Fabinho. Yeah. In, no one saw Fabinho for six months because he was being schooled in the Liverpool way. And now look at him, he's fabulous. And this is where Liverpool are now, where they, they get it right. They don't need to make wholesale changes. They can just tinker here and there and buy players for the future that they can slot in and, and do it. And, and that's the next challenge, I think, for Liverpool. That's the next challenge, to do that bit right, to make it sustainable. John, how's the response been from other fans? Uh, because obviously, I, I, I know there's a there's a couple of rivals who their noses are well out of joint. I know that. I, I'm going to tell you, and I think I've said this to you before. I I hate Everton, bitter rivals. But Evertonians, there are a lot of good Evertonians amongst them who can separate the football rivalry and whatever. So there's been a mixed message. Some of the Antonians are just so bitter. They were, they, uh, they, uh, um, they're not having it. They're not having it, are they, John? They're not having it. No, they're not having it at all. This is quite funny and it's good banter. But some have said, you know, fair play, you know. So the, 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 the reaction from them has been okay, pretty mixed. I think it's been pretty, uh, more vitriolic from United, which you'd expect. Um, and everyone else, I think, I think the general view is, even people who don't particularly like us as fans, think the team deserve it. They think Liverpool as a team have done well. That's pretty much... And, and I suppose, Kev, you're 23 points clear with seven games to go. It's very difficult to put a case together to say Liverpool don't deserve to win the game. No, of course, of course, um, no, of course. So I think, uh, I think that the... the uh, let's just say, I think what it has done is it's muted quite a few fans. I've not heard from a few people for a good few days. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a text from my mate John, uh, John Banks down south who's a big Spurs fan oh god and the, the, that night when I was having a beer um, celebrating on Thursday night and the text came through from him really nice text John knew when you got clocked that you were going to be dangerous thoroughly deserved 30 year wait what a fabulous team really nice text so I went back and just went yeah cheers John um, think we've got hopefully it's the start of something blah 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 so I got a text back 
no, no, I wasn't saying that, John. Just congratulations. <laughs> Just congratulations. That's it. Yeah, they don't want it to go on no further. Hey, listen, I, I'm in that boat, John. You've had, you, listen, fair play, but I don't want you winning, do I? How can I want you winning? I don't want you winning. But listen, you did. You guys deserved it this season, and I have to hold my hand up. We've been pals for a long, long time, mate, and you yeah. guys deserve. You guys have really, really deserved it. But John, I'm watching up now, I, I'm almost justified in getting it. If only the restaurants were open, Kev, I could have sung my song, couldn't I? Yeah, you could have. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, and I'm sure, and I'm sure when they do open, I'm still gonna get that. Don't worry really about don't, that. Don't you worry. It's got to be done. It's been cut off in his prime about four or five times, so he's got to get the full gift. He's got to get the full play. But John, what's your what's your actual actual thoughts on the whole season? Because obviously, after last season. I mean, you, you, the, the way you're finishing, you just got pipped at the end. Yeah. You know, from, from start. Obviously, this season ain't even really finished yet, but you're champions. What's your thoughts on the whole season? Oh, because... Over. No, but you're, you know, you still got games to play. I mean, Man City have to give you a guard of honour. No, Man City have to give you a guard of honour. That's, 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 a, that's a privilege that you get from being champions, John. You know I mean, what I mean? the derby. <laughs> hey John, no, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, the season though, Kev, is a good question. Do you know what though? In the whole, if I sat here afterwards, look, I think this season has been phenomenal, phenomenal around the uh, around the the, the, the the Premier League. And I think for them to come back, you know, let's be honest, last season was phenomenal. To hit 97 points and lose once. And, you know, if someone had said, I said, I said at the beginning, with 10 games to go last season, someone said to me, do you think you'll win the league? Because we're neck and neck with City. And I said, no. I said, the only way I think we will win the league is if we win all 10 games. If we win all the last 10 games, there's no way City will match that. You know, yeah. it's more likely the other way around, that we might stumble and City will go on a, a run. And to go and win the last 10 and still not win it, was just unbelievable. I mean, and credit to City. I mean, just unbelievable consistency yes. and a point better than that. But I think it was been very easy for Liverpool then to have fallen away and to the steam to have been kicked out of them. I think it was incredibly powerful that we then won the Champions League because I think it wasn't... I think if we'd lost the Champions League final, it would have been a massive downer. You know, that brilliant year and, and just fall short with nothing yet again. So, and clock getting, you don't win any trophies and whatever. So... I think to win the Champions League was actually very important in the Premier League win this year because I think as a group, it bonded them together and made them believe we're not just bridesmaids, we can actually go the whole Yeah, way. yeah. And I think that uh, squad must have got together at the beginning of this season with Klopp and said, we are going to go absolute full open on this Premier League this year. Because let's face it, some people disagree with the approach, but we haven't prioritised the domestic cups at all. Um, so, so we lost them. And, and actually, it sounds to me a little bit. I, I think, look, all I wanted was the Premier League this year as well. So I don't, don't not suggest I'm complaining. I'm delighted with the season. It's been a massive success. It's what yeah. we wanted. It's what we needed to do. And I think maybe to get this, kind of get the monkey off our back and get this one won, we needed to give it that level of focus just to get through, to get it done, to get back to winning the league. So I think that's right. I think it's a little bit sad, but actually that's it. You know, I, I actually am sad that we're not still in the hunt with the Champions League because I still, I thought we could retain that. And yeah. I think if, if we hadn't screwed up the Atletico match, I think if Alisson had been playing in that and we'd gone through, I'd, I'd fancy our chance of that. So in a sense, as you say, our season's kind of done. We're watching the, other, the, the rest of it. So going forward, I'd love to be able to see us compete on more fronts. You know, I'd love us to be able to challenge the title, for the title again, but be big news in, in the other cups. But I think it's been all around within the Premier League this year. And for that, you've got to say a fantastic season and fantastic bounce back and, and, and consistency by the boys. I mean, just think you just can't, can't knock them for it. John, the way I look at it, I look at it as this Liverpool side have, 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 have been through a growing process because you got to the Champions League final against Real Madrid. Then, you, you know, you, you lose that. The year before, we had the final in Basel. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Well, exactly. So you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of learning been going on, steps you've been taking. There's a process, and you've gone through the process, 
and then you, you, you played you played that other lot uh, in the final and you beat them. So now you're proven that you can win the big the big trophy. And that's a big and psychological it, thing, Kevin. That's, that's John, that's, John, huge that's huge. John, you come second in the league and then you... Because you, you, remember, you're going on two fronts and it never quite worked out for you. But you won, you won one. And now all the focus really was on the Premier League because you knew if you could just focus that little bit more, you could take it. Because City... City were there for the taking, really. You had them on the ropes and you, you couldn't finish them off because you probably had your eye on the Champions League as well. You know, maybe that was the case. And then, obviously, this season, you've won it at a canter. City, yeah, and all intents and purposes, City weren't the same City, but that's not your problem. No. That's not no. your problem. So you've won it at a canter. So, which is, which is brilliant. Now, the old Liverpool way is to be challenging on many different fronts. I think that's what you were saying, weren't you, before? Uh, so what's your thoughts on, would you need a, a bigger squad for that? I'm really, really um, conflicted about it, Kevin. I, I don't know the answer. I don't, going back to what you say, to, to, help, to answer that question as well, I think it's an interesting one because I had this theory, and I, I think I said to you a little while ago, I think there is an issue with teams at the moment nowadays where the intensity is so high, both physically and mentally, that I wonder if there is only a period of time you can stay at that absolute pitch. And I think that happened to City a little bit. Now, yeah. they may be proved wrong this year, and they might win the Champions League, they might do whatever, but I do think there's been an element with City where the, you know, the season they got 100 points, and then they, they, got, they won it last year with 98 points. They've been for two or three years, they've been at that 90 plus, that absolute top level. And I wonder if part of this season, well, they didn't really refresh much in the, in the summer. And all you're going to do is come off it a degree or two and things start to fray around yeah. the edges, then, then you lose it. So I think one of the things that Liverpool have to guard against is they were at that level last year. They're at this level this year. Now, I think the temptation is to say that, and, and, and you and I talked about this, I think, earlier, that um, this squad's probably at a pretty much a right, the, the right age to, 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 to carry on. It's, it's in its prime, Yeah. yeah. So the temptation is to say, keep that squad together, go again next year, you can do it again. But I wonder if there needs to be a little bit of freshening just to keep things fresh and to keep things moving. I know, again, the old Liverpool guys I've heard interviewed are saying that one of the things that used to happen uh, uh, during the pump was that um, someone would be dropped in. You know, they'd come in, they might liven up in training, could threaten a couple of people's in their, people in their positions. So it just kept everything a bit fresh and it gave everyone time. And I just wonder if, I don't think that squad needs whole wholesale changes. I, I, I think if you had a one-off match, nine times, maybe seven times out of ten, I maybe think City might win it. Good quality of squad and everything like that. But if you're talking about strength in every position on the pitch for the first team, I don't think Liverpool need to change much. I think if you look at that, that team, it's more maybe about squad players bolstering the squad, as you say, to be able to challenge on more fronts. But I think what Klopp is very into, and, I'm, and I endorse this, I think, it's a, I think it's interesting to see how it works, I think we've got a number of players, Neko, Neko Williams, um, you know, Brewster. The youth, um, the youth, yeah. The midfield lad, whose name is, who's, yeah, the midfield guard that's kind of played a guard that's always been good. They're all coming through and they should now be, you know, they should now get a chance in the last seven games to show what they should Yeah, do. they should play, yeah. No, really, Kev, I think you're saying if they're the real deal, that shouldn't weaken the team. People are saying, oh, risk losing matches by playing them. Well, then we can't run next season if we're risking losing matches. If you bring in Necker Williams in, I don't think you're weakening the team. You're changing it, but you're not yeah. weakening it. So they need to prove it. That gives you another group of players, and then maybe you just need to, to tinker. But again, what happened last year, and what I think made us be able to deliver this this year, is for the first time in Klopp's career, he said, we kept that squad together. And previously with Liverpool under, you know, through no fault of Brendan Rodgers, but he lost Suarez. That changed the whole dynamic of the team next year. Yeah. Panic bought Balotelli and whatever. The, you know, a couple of years before that, we lost Alonso. And so, you know, if we can keep this team together and enhance it in the areas where maybe it needs more support, I think we're crying out for a backup goalkeeper, that's a, that sort of area. Um, then I think there's no reason why we can't go again. But, and uh, the bill's going to say, throw back to you actually, Kev, is something I've noticed in the DNA of this Liverpool team, even with the celebrations, but just all season you've seen it. You know that Arsenal team you played in? 
there was a massive team camaraderie. I mean, you were an incredibly close knit bunch of people. I mean, you're still friends to this day, aren't yeah. you? Still, yeah. you know, you're still people who talk to each other this day. But there seemed to be a real togetherness. Now, I know all football teams have a togetherness, but there was a special togetherness around about around that bunch. I think, mean, you know, the United lads that all came through the academy together and then others came in. They had, you know, Keane came in, but they were a bunch that you still identify as being a group together. And I sense that this Liverpool team, they may have come from diverse parts of the, the world, yeah. but they do seem to actually like each other, which I know it's not essential. People always say it's not essential, but it does make... It makes a difference. It, it, it now felt, John. It now yeah. felt. And, when, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're winners... Winners recognise winners. You don't yeah. all need you. You don't. You're right. You don't all need to get along, but you still respect each other, and and, and you stay you stay together. So I get that. And, and you know, and I think you, you you probably it's more difficult to leave, isn't it? Because you're part of something that you feel you're doing with your mates. You think is special, and you're all winning. You know. So why do you want to go? So that so it's hard to leave. And I think that team also has a nice sprinkling of youth players coming through. But like your old team, some older heads in it that can get you over the line. And so I think, I think what Liverpool need to do is keep the squad together. I do think they need to add. I don't think they need to go out and buy any real superstars. Go out and strengthen it in the squad, in the end of the squad. And what I'm hoping, Kevin, is what you go back to. I think the fact they won the Champions League last year and they won the title this year, there is an arrogance about being winners that can be used in a positive way, isn't it? I don't mean I don't mean being cocky or letting go to their heads. But when you're people always said, didn't they? When, it, when we used to go, and you may be towards the latter years of Arsenal being good, when any team went head to head with United towards the end, you expected United to hold their nerve and pull away because they were winners. They knew they'd been around. How the to do it. They knew how to do it, yeah. And Liverpool are getting that. that, that and I see it in their play at Anfield. You know, we've been 1 0 down or we've been struggling. We used to panic every single time. We used to panic. And you'd see it go wrong, and the crowd would start getting nervous and everything. Players don't get nervous. They just keep playing. They keep holding the ball. They keep passing. They keep playing. They keep looking for an opportunity. Now, if that can be even made stronger with this self-belief that we're winners, maybe there's another level to go to. Because they're going to need to, because it's going to be tougher next year. So, John, what's, what, look, what's the future of the club moving forward? Because, obviously, there's what you think, and there's a realism of you've got Klopp, You've got uh, you've got a top manager. Your, your club's on the up. What's what's your thoughts on the club moving forward? Well, I think as important as Klopp is the structure we've got, and I think you know people slag off the owners for some reason for not spending money. I, I don't I don't get that at all. They're coming. I think in. you have spent money. Yeah, I do. They come but you, 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 look, John, you've spent money, but you've you've been smart how you've you, you've done it. Instead, what they've done, Kev, is turned it into a self-sustaining business. And that's what any business needs to be. You know, the yeah. whole problem that, that Leeds had, I've seen like I'm having a pop at Leeds, I'm not. But, you know, Leeds, bless them, were challenging for Champion League, League finals and everything. But they, 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 cu couldn't, they couldn't write the checks that they did. They were, they were trying to cash. They couldn't cash the checks they were writing. Yeah. So I think they, they're good owners. I think they've run in a very sensible way. They're not, they've not been perfect, but they've run it in a very sensible way. But I think they've put a great structure in. I think every club now needs a structure. There's a guy called Michael Edwards in there who looks after our recruitment. He's done a fabulous job. Um, and, of course, it's Klopp. And Klopp has turned out, not only is he a fabulous manager and coach, but he gets, he's a fit for Liverpool. He just gets it very well. So in the short term, um, I, I, th I think the issue for a lot of clubs at the moment and an issue for Liverpool in the short term is I'm not sure they've got money to spend on big, you know, the coronavirus is smashing the, their, their, their revenues into the ground. Uh, the longer it goes on without match day revenues, that gets harder and harder and harder. Yeah. So I think in common with a lot of clubs, I'm not sure that there's a tremendous amount of money there to be spent, which means keeping our people and clever buys are more important. And I think we can do that. So I think in the short term, we're fine. It's then right. How do we prepare for Klopp going? What happens if Mark, Michael Edwards goes? You know, we, I think the club needs to not stand still. All the clubs that have fallen off, and I think this is the danger, because they haven't planned properly. Arsenal yeah. aren't Arsenal at the moment, because Arsenal stopped being Arsenal. They stopped That's right. The way they, need, they needed to do it. Man United aren't Man United at the moment, because they stopped being Man United. And be honest, they didn't really prepare for life without Fergie. And I'm not having a pop at them, but the temptation for all of us is to think this will go on forever. 
but it doesn't. It never does. It never does. Liverpool aren't. Liverpool are. Th- we didn't win a title for thirty years because when not just Dal Gleish left, but that whole edifice behind it moved, and the and Robinson left, who was a great administrator. We weren't Liverpool anymore, so we started doing things differently. So I think getting the blueprint in place to make sure that we're safe going forward, keep doing what we're doing, and also just not get complacent. We need to go into next season thinking this 30 years since we had the last 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 uh, Premier League and that we need to win it. We're difficult to do, but yeah, need- Dave, that's difficult to do with you. With you, we're just with it. Leading from the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, yeah, I think we just need to keep it very, very. I think Liverpool. Like anything good in any business or anything, it's run in a very simple way at the moment. There's not lots of complications. And, you know, I think you guys, I listen to your podcasts and Arsenal guys, you know, it's a bit of confusion. Who's spending the money? Who's buying this? Who's identified that? Who's player? involved in the recruitment? Yeah, yeah, it's you know, a mess. Arteta, the man who's basically Ian Arteta's man. You don't get that at the moment with Liverpool. There's a sense of unity. And I'm not being smug about that because it can change like that. And, it, and we got it wrong for years and years. They need to understand what that blueprint is, what makes it work, and stick to it. And try and keep that going as long as possible. And the big issue is, we're going to have to deal with replacing Klopp one day, aren't we? Well, you're going to have to. And look, I, I, I truly think right now, like I said before, you've got players at the, the, they're in their prime, John. And when you've got players in their prime, you've got to maximise it. You've got to maximise it, and you've got to win when they're in their prime. So this is what I'll ask you, John. Leave it all, sorry Kev, just to finish, and not leave, which I think we did last time we were on the ascendancy, in the ascendancy. Don't wait for all those players at the same time to get over their peak. It's this tinkering. When we see one, you know, I remember uh, hearing uh, Sunes say that some, a player would go in the summer and he'd be like a top player. And he'd be like, oh, well, they've got rid of him early, haven't they? And so they said you'd watch him and he'd never be as good again. They got rid of him just at the right time. At the right the time. They brought in that you're talking about, they go, where's he come from? Would be as good, but be at the beginning of his career and it'd be yeah. right. Because and could improve, go up the ladder. Yeah. yeah. And you're just dropping that one player into an established ten. It's easy for them to get going. You try and change six players, you're starting again from scratch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so hard. hard. It's so hard, John. So, John, where do you reckon for next for well, for the foreseeable future, the, the challenges are going to come from because, like we've mentioned about this co- co- coronavirus and COVID and lockdown and all this, it's decimated some of the potential challenges to you. So, who do you reckon could be the challenges in the next season or two? I think, um, yeah, I watched them the other day and I watched them last week. I can't remember who they were playing. I, I think City are a phenomenal team, I think they really are a fabulous team. I think they'll strengthen. I think I think so. I think City. It's going to be City again. Are going to be up, right up there. I think I think Chelsea are going to give it a big go next year because I, I think it's City and Chelsea who've got the money. I think yeah. because of really the the, the, the transfer bans played into Chelsea's hands and the uh, what was his name the guy they saw Morato or whatever they they they, they saw they're only getting the money for him now. They got some cash to spend. City. They seem to be the rules seem to be altering to maybe allow them to spend some of their. Dirty Arab money and... Uh, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Listen, and, and these are the teams who have got kind of the sugar daddy owners. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're saying, aren't you? You know. And if their play allows them to do it, their power could be back on the first team power. I think United are going to improve, but I don't think United will win the league next year. I don't think they're going to be at that level. And I don't think they'll have the money to go out and really... Unless they sell to buy, sell a pump or something like that to buy. Um, I, but I think they could well be back in the top four next year with a view to challenging again over the next year or two. Um, but I think it's going to come from them. I think it's going to be, you know, Chelsea, uh, City uh, and United are going to be the three that probably will, uh, will, be there or, will be there or thereabouts. So just to finish then, John, because listen, it's, it's, it's actually been nice talking to you. You haven't milked it to, come on, let me hear it, John. Let me hear some of the, who's been in contact with you of your, your, all your Reds? I know it's been constant with you, so I'm going to have to take a little bit of pain at the end. So let, give me my pain now, I'll right? You, give me, had, give me some I've pain them, now. I've had them all in. I'll tell you what, we had, um, I was going to bed on the Thursday night and a fireworks display started off just down the, down the road. Until you jump up. Yeah, I got out over the window, 
Start me out the window, and there's a load of wrench and a fireworks display and jumping around in the garden. So I'm shouting out the window. <laughs> and then we'll yell from down the road. Can you shut up till tomorrow morning. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 oh, Simo, I love that. I love that red nose, John. I love it, mate. Love it. Yeah, Listen, no, 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 if, it. If, there, if ever there's a time to milk it and enjoy it, John, it's you now. It. You, you, it. you do, you do. Like I said, 30 years has been a long time. Yeah, you, you won trophies in between. That, Of course you have. But there's nothing like a title, is there, John? There isn't anything like a title. And please don't worry, Kev. We won't undermilk it. I'm not, I, I ain't worried about that. I'm, I'm worried about you over-milking it, John, like you normally do. Listen, you don't even win the title and you over-milk it, so God knows what I'm going to be in for when we could go to a restaurant or whatever. Well, yeah, well, we'll do that. Listen, I've got this up on the office wall. From I'm going to have to get another one of these. Can you see that's the old Champions League montage from last year? Um, oh, God. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, I'll get another one of those. Don't worry, I'll bring it along so you can see it. I've got a scarf here somewhere. But I'll... Um, they just burned the scarf. Burned the scarf. <laughs> we'll, have a, we'll have to have our. Uh, we always listen. We lose or draw. We always. Well, I, draw. I owe you a bottle of bubbly, don't I? You do mate. I owe you a bottle of bubbly now. You do. The, the, the you, magnum. We've had some fun out of the derbies and when we've had uh, when we've lost, so we can enjoy the enjoy the win. No, definitely enjoy it. Well, John, listen. We're at the end. Is there anything you want to say to to some of the detractors? Princess Guna knew you would win it. She was telling us all the bloody time that you're going to win it. After the event, though. Of course, Jenny, well, that's her, though, isn't it? She knows yeah, everything. Oh, Princess Guna always gives it the large after the, uh, <laughs> after the event, bless her. Yeah, no, I need to see her, and that's Sophie. She was oh. taking us to the end of the season. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a lot to LA to go out and dodge, hasn't she, eh? Oh, yeah. You've got to remember, John. Judges, judges is lifting half a pint to me, anyway. Hey, John, you know something. Some a lot of the Arsenal we're not we're not good at accepting you guys winning because it's been such a long time. We're, I won a title before this title. I won a title before Liverpool. You know, I was in with a title before you, but now you've got me now. So, geez, come on, Arsenal, we've got to get back to something. I do all you good as a deal. If I won't mention the title. If you don't mention 89 again. No, that can't happen, John. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the title. Bring it on. You knew. You set me up. You set me up. <laughs> I'll tell you what was funny the other day. Saw on Twitter, on Twitter, old Michael Thomas celebrating the title. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there, there you go again, John. Look at that, you know, Arsenal boy. You know, played for the club, won the, the, the league, and then went to Liverpool and absolutely enjoyed his time at Liverpool. So, yeah, I think you, you know, know. That, that's what it's about. That is what it's about. No, well, nobody's going to knock him for that. Like, Although I'm sure there was a couple. Oh yeah, I'm sure there are a couple. But if you're part of anything, are you? It sticks with you for life, and then you've got to you've got to celebrate that. But um, now the only thing I'd say, Kev, is nineteen. <laughs> Listen, there's quite a few United fans who are going to be seeing this, and obviously yeah. they they want they want ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. Our, our kids, our yeah, kids, not loving this. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, listen, congratulations, and listen, make sure yeah. you enjoy it. I don't even need to tell you that, but I've got to say it again. You make sure you enjoy it, mate, and uh, great right. talking to you. And we'll toast it together anyway. You can throw gritted teeth, but we'll toast it together soon, mate. Yeah. No problem, John. You take care, Red Nose. Cheers, mate. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye.